So we were just talking about this in our article at the latinoslant.com in the just epic mishandling of Spyglass Entertainment and the Scream franchise. Not one, not two, but three central figures to the franchise are gone. Melissa Barrera, Jen Ortega, and that director, Chris Landon. So now Melissa has been um, talking. She's at Sundance. She's got to film Your Monster, which we will also have an exclusive here at the latinoslant.com. Make sure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and to the .com because we will be doing a weekly newsletter as well as having great editorials from a bunch of great different writers there, latinoslant.com. So look out for that. So <clears throat> it, this is ongoing. This is crazy. And Melissa is is not going anywhere and she's not being quiet about this so let's go to the deadline article i believe and they did a good job of kind of taking the best out of uh or excuse me variety variety it's all the same thing <laughs> it really is <laughs> melissa barrera scream firing was shocked after studio accused her of holocaust distortion Response to Jen Ortega's exit, she's a good egg. She continues to open about her firing from Scream. The actor played Sa Sam Carpenter, the, the daughter of Billy Loomis in 2022 and 23 Screams. The latter which set a franchise box office record of $108 million domestically. And we also did, guys, a nice article on that as well, where the data and the stats showed huge Latino movie going audience came and saw and you had a new you had a, that new audience brand new generation of scream audience that spy guys had in their hands had in their hands man had in their hands all right let's continue to read she was supposed to continue playing the character in the upcoming scream 7 but she was fired last november after social media po uh, posts about Palestine that Spyglass, the studio behind Scream, interpreted as anti-Semitic. Wow. Wow. Barrera told, previously told the Associated Press the last few months has been a, a big awakening. I'm just so grateful for everything that's happened. Now, she told Rolling Stone that the Palestine Post led to her firing shouldn't be controversial as she was just advocating for human rights. So, there's this whole argument, guys, and I, I, listen, there's a whole argument that, that is really hot and heavy. If you're pro-Palestine or pro-Israel, I mean, uh, heaven forbid that we're just for pro-people not being killed, period. But people can't see through that. So they just, they're picking sides and they're pretty vile about it. Both sides. That's what I've seen. Both sides. I'm just going to say it. I'm, I have to say it. So, um, yeah, let's continue. When Spyglass confirmed Barrera's firing and issued a statement, said that they have zero tolerance for anti-Semitism or the incitement of hate in any form, including false references to genocide, ethnic cleansing, Holocaust distortion, or anything that flagrantly crosses the line into hate speech. Barrera says this to Rolling Stone, I'm not the first person that's happened to, but it was shocking. When Rolling Stone brought up the accusation of accusing of Holocaust distortion, she says, I don't even know what to say. I think everything that happened was very transparent on both sides. I know who I am, and I know that what I said always came up from a place of love and a place of humanity and a place of human rights and a place of freedom for the people, which shouldn't be controversial. It shouldn't be up for debate. I'm so very at peace. So I'm very, I'm very at peace. The people who know me and my family know the truth about me and where I stand. And I think most people in the world also do so. Barrera stressed that she was asking what, what she was asking for was a ceasefire in Gaza, which is for the well-being of both sides of that wall, you know, at the at an end to the violence. That's it. An end to the violence for everyone's peace and security, just humanity. She has continued to speak out in support of, of a ceasefire, recently joining a pro-Palestine march while attending the Sundance Film Festival to premiere her movie, Your Monster. 
Yes, we have that video up as well in our short. We did a short on that recently. We will have a Melissa Barrera playlist. I think it's up. I think it's up. So check check the check the main the, the main the channel's main page there. This is fascinating, guys. Absolutely fascinating. You just don't see this happen a lot. At least made out into the public. People are pipe. Listen, <clears throat> artists front of and behind the camera, they're paid off all the time to shut up and go away. Big case in point, Victoria Alonso. Better for worse, that's what happened. She got she got her money because she threatened to sue. But there's countless others where maybe they sign a document and they can't say anything. You're paid, bye-bye. And if you did, you're sued, screwed, and tattooed, blacklisted in this business. Brutal. Brutal. Here we go. Barrera's exit from the franchise was followed by her co-star Jenna Ortega leaving the next sequel. Christopher Landon, the director, dropping out of the film. It was reported that Ortega's decision was made prior to Barrera's firing. Listen, Jenna's a good egg. Barrera told Rolling Stone. She's a good person, and we love each other. She would show up for me, and I would show up for her no matter what. Landon wrote on social media, announcing his exit, directing. Scream 7 was a dream job turned into a nightmare. My heart goes out. My heart did break for everyone involved. Everyone. But it's time to move on. Well, um, what do you guys think? Let me know in the chat right now. In that comment. I want you to comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, do your best to keep it civil, and I will. Uh, I will definitely reply. Uh, we. It's interesting, right? <clears throat> because you know, on one hand, she's she's was right in the middle of the rise of her career. A lot going on the last couple of years, and but then she obviously took a stand uh, that she's that she feels is a righteous stand. You know, when it goes against the a Hollywood, the Hollywood grain, you see what happens. Gina Carano. I think Gina's a different story because I don't think Gina needed, you know, needed Hollywood. Melissa doesn't need Hollywood either, as we're seeing, which I find fascinating. <clears throat> but Melissa is a trained singer, dancer, and actress since she was a kid, whereas Gina comes from another type of discipline with martial arts. But both have an amazing mind, an amazing uh, sense of who they are with Gina Car Carano, uh, a sweet sensibility to them. Uh, but don't don't get it wrong. It's that sharp, sharp mindset that you have when you're an MMA champ, that you have when you're a, uh, a, a kind of Broadway level, multi, you know, singer, songwriter, performer and actress out of Mexico that Melissa is. So, okay, <clears throat> that's enough chit-chat for me. Uh, another kind of just revealing uh, words from Melissa Barrera. A lot of Melissa Barrera fans here on the slant. Again, hit me up with how you feel on this matter. Uh, we got, let's show you right now. Let's just do that right now. Let's go over to this video and show you her uh, her time at Sundance where her and a lot of other people uh, we're at this pro-Palestine uh, ceasefire, ceasefire uh, uh, protest. And uh, wherever you're at, keep that slam fuerte. Hit that video right now. Bus. <laughs> 